Say, if you ask, he will do it. I hear the Lord say, if you ask, he will do it. He's not wanting to hide. Yes, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus.
Jesus. Good morning. Oh, we thank you, God, for this day. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we praise you this morning, God. We thank you for this opportunity to be here in our homes, in the workplace, Lord, to be able to worship you freely, God. all rise up this morning and let's just praise and worship and give him thanks for everything he has done this past week because he's a good God he's a great God he's a God of miracles chain breaking way maker God and we thank you Jesus I just want you to know that we serve a miracle working God. Right, Pastor? Hallelujah. If you didn't hear that testimony Thursday night, you need to listen to it. You need to go back and listen to it. Because that is the God that we serve. Hallelujah. He's a God of miracles, church. Oh, yes, he is. Jesus. Let faith arise. Despite what I see, Lord, I believe. But help my unbelief, I choose to trust you. I trust you, Lord. No matter what I feel, let faith arise. Let it arise this morning. Oh, yes. Let faith arise. For my champion. Not dead. Oh, he is alive, he is alive. And he already knows my every need. He knows your need this morning, church. He's come and he will come and rescue me. Oh, he rescued us oh, from our He's depths. a rescuing God. Hallelujah. Your 
love for us. His love is greater. His love heals. His love breaks chains. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. To these times, Lord, you've always stayed beside us. Even when this world is shaking, our faith in you is, is growing.
Remind me of my worth. I don't trust my ways. I'm trading in my thoughts. I've laid down everything. Cause you're all that I want. I landed on my knees. This is the cup you have. say 
is wrong, then I'll say no. And if you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. And if you say be still, then I will wait. And if you say to trust, I will obey. You're the only truth, the life, the way. And I'm done chasing feelings. Spirit, lead me. A spirit, lead me. A spirit, lead me. A spirit, lead me. Breathe. 
vayas, no vayas. Spirit move, church. Just let it move in your soul. He's not done this morning. He's not done yet with you. He's not done. your battle cry this morning, church. There's something he's trying to tell you this morning. Just open your hearts, open your soul, just let it in. Just say yes to him. Just say yes. He has a great plan for each one of us. Don't hold it back. We have prayer warriors in this place. We have prophetics in this place. We have true worshipers everywhere. You are true worshipers. We have teachers. We have fat pastors. We have leaders in this place. But it takes for you to say yes. It takes for you to say, I'm ready. And step out. Step out and you come out of your comfort zone. I guarantee you, he won't let you go. He hasn't let you go. He's been with you side by side. It's just up to you to say, yes, God. Yes, God, I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready, church? Are you ready just to glorify his name, to praise his name this morning? Because he is our King of kings and the Lord of lords. Are you ready to worship? Are you ready to pray? Because he is worthy. As you are worthy to him. It works both ways. declaration
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. Hey, hey. Christianity, if you don't, hallelujah, what is that? I've, I've heard Medea say that, hallelujah. What is that? What is that? Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's an, it's a, it, it's an Arabic word. It's Aramaic. It's Hebrew. Hallelujah. It's a compound word. Hallelujah. All praises that are due. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praises that are due are due to Yahweh. that word. I like saying it in Spanish. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, it's all right in English. Hallelujah. But in Spanish, it's almost better. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, welcome family to the Peak Community Church. Thank you, worship team. Can we, can we just hand clap? Hey, uh, just want to welcome you here this morning, family. If this is uh, your first time with us, welcome. If you're watching online, welcome. We welcome you to the Peak Community Church. Uh, my name is Pastor Rob. I'm the senior pastor here and just want to open up in a word of prayer. Amen. Oh, Lord, Father, God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your presence here this morning. We thank you, oh God, for moving and stirring within our hearts, oh Lord. I pray, oh God, as your presence is here, Lord, that you would open up our eyes and ears to hear and see and receive, oh God, that which you have for us here this morning. Move amongst us, oh God. Reveal yourself, I pray, as we get ready to worship you, oh Father God. Even in our offerings, even in our giving, I pray right now. Oh, Father, every resource, you are the God who owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Your resources never run dry. And I pray, oh, God, give us the faith to be able to access, oh, Lord, to be able to speak your word, your truth into this life. I release now, oh, Father God, your blessing upon your people through the power, the unction of your Holy Spirit, and in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hey, pay close attention. We're going to give you some of uh, our announcements, and uh, we'll be right back.
world of free when children open their shoe boxes. They are so excited. I mean, it's just been incredible. Kids are so excited. Giving them a gift, do it in Jesus' name, and that's what this is all about. Jesus loves you. It's a gospel opportunity. It's the chance for the children to change the entire life. The word of God is spreading. The gospel is advancing. It is impacting children. It is impacting families. It is impacting the world greatly. Thank you for praying. Thank you for giving. God will bless and God will use your gift to touch the life of a child and to be able to do it in Jesus' name. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. God bless each and every one of you. us online, I want to welcome you. Um, if this is the first time that you're joining with us, not only do I want to welcome you, can I encourage you to please fill out a connect card? Um, you know, just give us some information about you. We want to connect with you and we want you to be able to connect with us. And if you're online, visit our website at thepeakcc.com. There's a visitor page. There's a digital connect card right there. And um, by doing that this morning uh, via your email, we want to give you a free subscription to Right Now Media. It is uh, an online resource of, of, of a ton of information, of Christian content that would help you on your spiritual growth uh, to maturity. Amen? And it's our way of saying, hey, thank you for coming and worshiping with us and connecting with us here at the peak. If you saw that, um, the, we're in Operation Christmas Box this is what the actual shoe box looks like physically. It's a physical box. It's cardboard. However, you know, we're in COVID now. If you went online, you can, you can find a digital box, <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> and you could fill that box with digital stuff. It's actually pretty cool. Um, there's actually two ways of doing this online, and um, I did it the man way. Um, there's a button that says, just build my box. And so I hit it and paid for it, and they put everything in it for me, and then they sent it out. Most importantly, they put the gospel message of Jesus Christ into it. Um, if, if you're like one of those people um, that you like having that online experience, and you want to know what you're putting in the box, you can actually go and choose items, and you can fill and, and customize and build your own box. And... Um, that's an awesome way of doing it, um, and they make it real simple. Um, so, so you could do this online very easily, and or we can actually give you a physical box, and you could fill it, and 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 we'll help it with the with the shipping and that sort of stuff. Last year, um, we did I think 82 boxes. Even in the midst of COVID, I'm believing us for a hundred boxes. And so please, please consider, consider doing a Christmas shoebox for a child via Samaritan's Purse. Uh, uh, we're, we're happy to partner with uh, Samaritan's Purse on, on this. Um, before I jump in, uh, Scripture always teaches to give honor where honor is due. And, um, it, you know, uh, we have some people visiting us here this morning. And um, a very, very dear sister, uh, someone who has a very prophetic voice. Carol, it is absolutely awesome to see you. Can we just, um, just welcome Carol Boise uh, to, to it? An amazing woman of God um, and, and, and a sister and a dear friend. Love you. Miss you. Trevor. Oh, your baby. Oh, my God, your grandson is amazing. And, and, and I also want to give um, honor where honor is due. Um, Dr. Melvin Paris is in the house from Virginia. And Dr. Paris, God bless you. Thank you. Um, a mentor, uh, a man of God, uh, men's ministry, um, uh, prison ministry. Man, man has given and sacrificed a lot. And we welcome you here this morning. Honored to have you. Amen. Uh, okay, so a few weeks ago, we started a sermon series in the book of Philippians, and, and its central message, very simple, 
no matter what the circumstance in life, you can have true joy. We can have true joy. Even in the midst of some of the worst circumstances, even in the middle of 2020, we can have true joy. But the Bible also teaches that the, that the flesh wars against the spirit and that the spirit wars against the flesh. And the two are opposed at each other. And at any given time, listen to this, there's a part of you that is dying while there's another part of you that is thriving. Come on. At any given point in time, there's a part of you that is dying and another part of you that is thriving. And while we listened to that message last week, we should have been challenged or at least confronted with the reality of who inside of us is currently thriving and who inside of us is currently dying. Is it your spirit or is it your flesh? We also spoke about a paradigm shift. A change of trajectory. And in that shift, in that shift, the old way of doing things was falling away. And there's now birth right alongside of it, a new way of doing things. And so my question then is, is, is are we holding on to the old or are we pivoting and allowing God to change us? The mission stays the same but the methodology changes, becomes different. Our trajectory is different. If you miss these messages, uh, um, I w you know, go visit uh, uh, Google or, or iTunes. Um, if you just type in the Peak Community Church, um, all of our podcasts and previous messages are there available for free. Very soon you'll be able to actually download our app and um, in our church app, and, and you'll have everything that, all of our content that we uh, put out will, will be there available for free, amen? In Ecclesiastes 4.12, the Bible says, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a three-fold cord is not easily broken. The lesson that the Bible teaches us is that what we can't do alone, we can do together. In Leviticus 26, 7, 9, it says that you will chase your enemies and they shall fall by the sword before you. Five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight. Your enemies shall fall by the sword before you. For I will what? Look favorably and make you fruitful. I will multiply you and confirm my covenant with you. I'm going to confirm my contract with you. I'm going to give credibility to the promises that I have made to you. Today we're speaking about unity in faith. Our unity in faith creates, title of the message, an army of one. An army of one. You like that title, Carol? <laughs> Retired colonel. <laughs> Coming into Philippians chapter 2 this morning, just doing four verses. Therefore, Paul writes, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. Lord, Heavenly Father, as we've gathered here this morning, God, I pray, Lord, that you would just open up your scriptures. They are living. They are powerful, O oh, Father God. They are sharper than any two-edged sword. 
I pray, God, this morning that your word would be able to penetrate into our hearts and into our souls. Cut out, O oh Father God, the dross and the contaminants, O oh Father God, and bring forth the healing and fill us with the manna from heaven, O oh God, that would give us the nutrients that we need a, to grow and mature, Lord Father, as your children. That, O oh God, we would be able to reflect and be conformed to the image of your Son, O oh God. I pray, let this mind be in us, in and through Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> therefore, as a Bible teacher, I always say, whenever you see that word, therefore, you have to ask yourself, what is it there for? It's tying in a, a, a previous context into now the current context. Paul ties in today's thoughts with last week's message. The fact that it is no longer I who live. Come on, remember last week? This, this carnal nature, this me, the flesh me with its desires and temptations, with all of its sinful ambitions and selfish motives. This me, the, the, the me me, you know who that is. That that person is dying. That I voluntarily put him to death that I've crucified that carnal nature with Christ to die to myself. And now, now the life that I live, well, it's not longer I who live it. Paul said it is Christ who lives in me. Not my will, but your will, O oh God, be done. So now, since it is he who is alive in me, the Bible says that my conduct, come on, say conduct. conduct. My conduct, huh? My behavior patterns. That's, that's not who you are on Sunday morning when you come to church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we could, we could do church on Sunday. But can we do church on Monday? Tuesday, Wednesday? Come on, you know it gets a little choppy by Thursday. And Friday, for whatever reason, everybody's just outside crazy because you're looking to get out of, mm, get that check. Can we be church seven days a week? It's not, it's not who we are on Sunday mornings, but who we are behind closed doors when no one is watching. That's what character is. My conduct, my character, my behavior patterns should be worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have I truly received with gratitude the free gift that he's given to me? Then there's a responsibility that comes with that. Bible says that I should be reflecting Christ. I should be looking like Christ. Every day I should be dying more to myself and living more to him. That means that as I mature and as time goes by, you should be seeing more of Jesus and less of me. Now I know I'm 47 years old and I know I haven't arrived and I'm not where I would love to be, where I would like to be. Sometimes I miss those moments, those, those mountaintop moments where I was alone with the Lord with no temptations and distractions of the world, but truly walking just on that mm, spiritual plane. God. But man, 2020 throws a lot of stuff at you. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, Paul is not questioning whether the Philippians uh, um, have these things. It's not if they have these things. In the Greek, these clauses are not conveying doubt. He's using rhetorical expressions to say that since the believers do, in fact, have these things, it could be translated or interpreted since there is consolation in Christ. These are four certainties that we can be sure of by being in Christ. Since you have encouragement from being united with Christ, Christ is the source of our encouragement. Think about what it is to be encouraged. Huh? 
that word courage is, is right in there. To have courage. That, 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 that doesn't mean to, to, to have a lack of fear. That means to, to, even while being afraid, to have what it takes to confront that fear and stand encouraged. To have this courage, an emboldenment that comes from within. Encouragement, consolation, because of Christ. We have a security that is birthed within us. The encouragement from Christ flows from us to one another. That's why when we come together, <laughs> that's why the Bible says do not forsake the congregating, the assembling of the saints. There's a biblical mandate of us coming and getting together. Now, I know we've been under attack. I know the adversary's been trying to bring forth divisions and dissensions for our young people. I mean, how hard is it to date now? How, what's social life looking like? How, how is it where, where, where we're made to be able to, to, to be community, but now government is telling us that we must isolate and be separated? There's a biblical mandate that states that when we get together, when we begin to speak those things of faith, when I could turn around and tell you the testimony that I told Thursday night of how on the job I made a $6,000 clerical error and how God, by me praying to God, he multiplied asphalt shingles on the job so that I can not have to lose out. Oh, <laughs> You've heard about him multiplying bread. You've heard about him multiplying fish. Come on. This week, I messed up so bad, my God multiplies shingles for me. That ought to encourage us. My God, he's still doing miracles. Why you did that for him? I'm in a jam right now, God. God, help me, Lord. Help me like you helped him. You know, the Bible says he's no respecters of persons. You know, it ain't nothing because, oh, he's a pastor. I've got, man, I'm another sinner just like you. Trust me. <laughs> and if you don't think that's true, that's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> he's no respecters of persons, man. If we walk in obedience, his promises are yea and amen to those who believe. He's saying that we have this consolation. We have this encouragement in Christ, and since we have this encouragement, there, there's three definitions that we can apply here to this word encouragement, this word consolation. The first one is the act of emboldening another in belief of course of action. So this morning, as I share a testimony, as you share your testimonies, as we come and we gather and we talk about the goodness of the Lord and the things that he's doing for us in our lives, we're, we're emboldening each other. You may have come down downcasted, but you may have heard something that turned around and gave you hope. There's an encouragement that comes within that. There's purpose within that. The other, the other word, uh, the other translation or meaning could be strong request. Making a strong request before the Lord. This week I had a strong request. It was like an impossible request. It was a strong request. It was an encouragement. Because I have Christ, I can be encouraged. He's done miracles for me in the past. Well, if he's done it for me in the past, man, I, I, I'm sure he's going to continue to do for it in the future. The third one is lifting of another's spirits. I pray that your spirits are lifted here this morning. I pray that as we've gathered here together, there's consolation in regards to exhortation, request, supplication, and comfort. 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 And so since we have encouragement in Christ, since we have comfort of love, you know that, that, that love? It's not that Philippians love. You remember I told Philippians, phileos is that brotherly love, that fraternal kind of love. The Greeks had a variety of different words to express love. Eros, you know, that erotic love that you would have, that intimate love. Yeah, you know, there's a variety of different. But this love, this, this agape love, this is an unnatural love. This is unnatural. 
It's easy to love somebody who loves you. Can you love somebody who hates you? Love, I, I can like you, I can do certain things for you, but am I willing to sacrifice and give up my own for you? There's no greater love than this than a man would lay down his life for his friend. The type of love that God expressed and showed us on Calvary is a divine love. It's a love that is unknown by this world. It's only a love that you can only know when Christ is birthed inside of you. I remember my first child. Hey. I remember when Hannah was born. Yeah, you know, I'm scared. I'm nervous. I don't know. I'm pacing my wife. We're, we're, we're getting into the hospital. I mean, she's like, I mean, contractions. I mean, it's happening. We were on the way to the baby shower. And we had to bypass the baby shower and go straight to the hospital. And we get to the hospital, and oh, my God, you know, we go through the whole thing. I, I, I won't, you know, the story. I'll give you the story sometime. But the long short of it, the moment I held that baby in my hand, it was a game changer. That little girl, I mean, Eunice says she looked like an alien. I thought she looked like the most beautiful, <laughs> precious thing. I was like, she's gorgeous. My God, look at this. <laughs> it's beautiful. I felt this connection. I held my mother. I looked at my mother in a whole different light. I fell in love with my wife on a whole deeper level. I didn't know it was possible. It was a game changer. Something was birthed inside of me by the birth of that child. And to know that that was flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. My God, that connection. Only happen. You, you, you can't explain it unless you go through it. I tell people all that all the time. My God, you won't know this. I can't explain this unless you go, you understand this and you go through it. Until you open up your heart to Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive you of your sins. Until you can come to the place of recognizing that there are levels and areas of your life that are broken. And you surrender them unto the Lord. You cannot know. You will not know. This will not make any sense to you. There's something that is broken birthed inside of us when we come to Christ when we receive his love his paraclesis love this comforting love comforting love paraclesis is that when we get that word paracletos the comforter it's the work the job of the Holy Spirit that comes alongside of us to move us along and grow us by God the presence of the living God with me around me, moving me, that I can feel his love with me. Yeah, there's comfort in that. Doesn't matter the situation, prison, downstate, upstate, jobless, job full, whatever. Hey, your presence, your love comforts us, oh God. And since we, since we, since we have this comfort of love, since we have this consolation. The Bible also says that we have this fellowship of the Spirit. This fellowship of the Spirit. Remember a couple of, you know, koinonia? That, that you know, where, how'd you, where'd you coin that phrase from, that stamp? You're, you're making a, a, a stamp, a, a replica. You're coining something. We're coined. When we come to Christ, we, we begin to look like Christ. He coins himself upon us. And then as we're looking like him and you're looking like him and you're looking like him and we all begin to look like him, when we come together, we're, together we're reflecting him, the body, the body, the body of Christ, this fellowship. And since we now are in unity in Christ, that means that we carry his affections and his mercies. The things that matter to him matter to us. And we bring those affections and we bring those mercies toward each other. There's forgiveness. There's grace amongst us. And if that's the truth, if this is what the Bible says, then I have a, I have a real problem. 
Because, because even amongst Christian churches today, I see so many people saying and being mean. Doing things that don't align up with the word of God. How can you have Christ inside of you and be miserable? Be, be, be angry. How, how can they live in anxiety and resentment if they have received the grace of God? To receive the Lamb of God? My life is no longer mine. I've been purchased. I've been paid for. There's a price that has been paid for me, for my freedom. How dare me try to renege on that? Don't get it twisted. We cannot have unity in Christ and not feel the affections of his spirit towards each other. Can't happen. It's not, he's not going to go contrary to his nature. If he has birthed his nature inside of us, we ought to be loving each other the way he loves us. Paul says that his joy was fulfilled with these four things. We've got four clauses, we've got four fulfillments. One, when we're like minded. Romans 12, 16, be of the same mind toward one another. That our thoughts ought to be aligned. We ought to be aligned in our thoughts. Can I step on some toes this morning? Christian, how do you feel about late-term abortion? Christian, how do you feel about late-term abortion? I'm not even talking about just abortion. I mean, late-term abortion. Second trimester, third trimester, at nine months, still killing a baby. It's okay? Is that okay? That's not okay. That, according to the word of God, that is, not, that is demonic. What do you think about tithing and sowing, Christian? You think about putting money towards the kingdom of God to those, you know, preachers with them fat pockets. You know what I say? Honestly, I don't want to be offensive. Who cares what I think? The fact of the matter is I don't want to offend you. I really don't even care what you think. All I care is what God thinks. God, what is your way? Because let every man be a liar. And God is truth. His word is truth. <clears throat> I can't take his scripture and begin to pull it apart and, and conform it to fit my ideologies. His word is his word. And it should be transforming me. I don't change his word. His word ought to be changing me. This fulfilled uh, Paul, you know what else will fill Paul? Having the same love. Having that same agape divine love that can only be experienced through God. Being of one accord. The Greek word here, uh, simpsychos, uh, uh, describes the sharing of the same attitude or mindset. One mind, sim, one mind. Psychos is the, the soul, the center of your affections. So having one soul, being of one soul, one mind, one accord. That is being, having a unity that is inseparable. And this inseparation is having the mind of Christ. Not my thoughts, not Dr. Phil's thoughts, not Oprah's thoughts. I don't care. Man is man. God, your thoughts. What is your mind? Place your mind on me. And this, verses 5, five to 8, points back to the letter's main purpose of encouraging the Philippians to stand firm together. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whatever I come and see you or am absent, that I may hear of your affairs. That you what? Stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. That we have put on the mind of Christ. 
operating on this Christ-centered level, finding unity in the body of believers, Paul gives us some practical instructions. Verse 3, let nothing, nothing, let no thing. Come on, look at your neighbor, tell them no thing. No thing, let no thing be done in what? Selfish ambition for personal gain. The Bible speaks of empty conceit, referring to arrogance, pride, and inflated egos. You know, you could have, you could have ambitions for good things but have bad motives. Why are you doing what you're doing? Oh, that looks good in front of people, but are you doing it for people or are you doing it for yourself? A lot of people could get lost in doing the work of the ministry because that's their outlet. But they're, they're, they're finding that it's because they're doing the work of the ministry that then they're feeling that based on that contribution that they're doing, that they're going to be okay for the wrong that they've carried. And that don't work like that. Ain't no matter amount of good that I can ever do that's ever going to be able to be enough. Ain't no price that we can ever pay. We cannot live holy lives unto the Lord unless we have the Lord living his life in us. No. Paul states that we should be operating in lowliness of mind. That we should be living in humility without the sense of arrogance, without the sense of conceit or haughtiness. It's only by abstaining from self-aggrandizement. There's a fancy word. Aggrandizement. Puffing yourself up. Only from abstaining from puffing yourself up. Making yourself look bigger than you are in front of others. Oh, you know, oh, man, we did a missionary trip. Oh, oh, yeah, you did a missionary trip last year? Oh, that's awesome, man. I did four of them. Yeah. <laughs> we built four churches. <laughs> oh, you did an outreach? You did evangelism? How many people were out there? 300? Oh, man, you know, that's great. You know, we did an outreach last week. We had 3,000 people show up. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Numbers inflating. No. No, we have to abstain from all of that in order to be able to have a Christian community, to be able to maintain in harmony. We're not competing with each other. Rather, we are serving each other. Each one of you gifted, talented, made fearfully and wonderfully with gifts and talents and skill sets that God wants to use. Not all could be a voice. He needs hands and feet. He needs a heartbeat. Huh? He needs some strategy. He needs people with some connections. He needs people that's got a phone book and, 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 and can dial up some, you know, community leaders. He, he needs each and every single one of you to do what he wants to do with the Peak Community Church. This ain't about a pastor. This, ain't about, this is about his body, his bride. We ought to be esteeming, I like that word, to esteem, to respect, admire, regarding in value others better than yourself. Stop and think for a second. What, what would life look like if we would all practice the discipline of placing others above ourselves? It doesn't matter of their socioeconomic status. It doesn't matter of, 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 of what grade they were able to finish or, 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 or how much money they make or, 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 you know, whether they, you know, talk like you or dress like you. <laughs> no, every variety, every spice of life, come on, every individual to find the intrinsic God value, the imago Deu in everybody, in the homeless person on the corner, in the drug addict that's squatting. I'm talking about being able to see God in some of the most vile of criminals in prisons. I know that the gospel has the power to transform every life. Can we love like God loved us? Let each of you look not, not only for his own interest, 
but also for the interest of others. Paul concludes it this way, and I'll conclude it the same way. That our love for each other be self-evident that we would put others before ourselves regardless of we esteem them or not. We ought to be esteeming them, raising them up, taking the time. For me, it's people over process. I'd rather be late to the next meeting and know that I'm caring for a heart that is hurting. At that moment in time, it's the land that matters the most to me. Romans 12, 9 through 21. (sighs) Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly and affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulations. Continuing steadfast in prayer. Distributing to the needs of the saints. Given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on things above, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men, if it is possible, as much as it depends on you. Live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And so since God gives you that promise, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Whichever way you cut it, two wrongs never make a right. The only way that we can expel hatred and evil is with love and light. My question to you this morning is, have you extended yourself to those around you? That's the challenge. How do you treat those of the household of faith? regardless of the socioeconomic status, family. Are we always going to relate? (laughs) No. Are we always going to get along? No. Are we always going to be happy with each other? No. But we're family. And you don't pick and choose family. You're born into them. And I don't know about you, but we all have that uncle or that aunt. Thanksgiving comes, Christmas comes, oh, Lord. I may not like you, but I love you, you family. What would, what would the family of God look like if we began to treat each other like that and give each other grace? Expressions of worship as they are, let them be expressions of worship. That one, that one's a little kooky. Woo! (laughs) But she loves the Lord. She loves the Lord. She got a testimony. Huh? The way that one dances, oh my goodness. You know, she she was told she wasn't going to be able to walk ever, ever. Sometimes in our eyes of judgment, we wind up blocking God's blessing. We're family. And that's why for me at the peak here, it's always been, you can, you can come in as a stranger. You come in the first time, you come in as a stranger, but when you leave here, you're leaving as family. We love you. We love you guys. You came back and you brought family. We love you guys. 
<laughs> family. And as family of faith, we have belief. A God who is rooted in his word and whose word is rooted in us and whose word is Jesus Christ, the living word of God. <sighs> Maybe you stumbled across this post this morning by accident. And you're watching online. Maybe you're here this morning. God's stirring something up inside of you. Maybe you just feel this desire. You want to know him a little better. You just want to open yourself up and, and open your heart. Just make a stand for him. This morning, I mean, if, if you just want to feel that, if you want to open that and, and, and just give him room, I want to encourage you just to open it up in prayer right now. There's no secret words or there's no incantation. There's no spell bounds or any nonsense like that. This is a heart. God listens to our hearts. He sees our hearts. He knows exactly where we're at. Man, let me tell you, there is no valley so deep and no mountain so high that you can escape his presence. All we have to do is acknowledge his presence and turn towards him. And say, God, I've been running. I've been trying to do this all on my own. I've been, I've been trying to figure this out. I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I'm heavy. I've, I, my conscience is dirty. I'm, I'm carrying weight. I don't want to carry this weight. I'm sorry, God, for the wrong that I've done. I just, I want to feel your forgiveness. I want to know that I have the freedom of your spirit living inside of me. God, please just have your way with me this morning. If your heart's been gripped by fear or uncertainty, Maybe you feel shame, regret. Maybe you heard this message and you're thinking to yourself, man, you know, I've had so many opportunities to serve others. And I've placed myself before them. God, I'm sorry. Help me to put them before myself. Help me, Father God, to esteem others better and greater than myself. You're ready to turn your heart to God this morning. I believe he's ready to touch you and heal you. Do you want to be set free? He's ready right now just to forgive you of your past and to give you a promise of a new future. To be united with the people of God. Come on, oh Lord, that you would allow us to be one spirit, one mind, and be in one accord, reflecting your image. Ah, through the power of your Holy Spirit, oh God. Would you stand with me this morning? I'm going to just slow down for a second. I want to just discern and feel, Carol, do you have anything this morning? No? Okay. Hey. Ah. Lord, Father, we just come before you. We bring all our faults, all our failures. God, they ain't nothing in secrecy to you. I pray, God, that you help us, Lord. Forgive us our sins, Father. Cover us where we fall short. I pray, God, your hand upon each and every one of your children here this morning. Just breathe your breath of life, oh God. As you breathe into the nostrils of Adam, I pray, God, now that we would receive your Holy Spirit. Breathe your breath of life. Oh, God. Bring the transformation, God. Bring the stirring, I pray, Lord. Bring forth the conviction of your Holy Spirit that we would walk in obedience to your leading, oh God. Spirit of God, lead us, oh Lord. Oh God, I just pray right now for the deliverance to come upon us. Bring forth healing not only upon us as individuals. Let this revival Father God, let it happen now individually for us, oh God. If you could spark each and every one of these flames, oh Father God, we would set this city on fire. Come on. 
declare right now over all of our youth, all of our young people. I just pray, God, for healing, for genuine, sincere, authentic relationships, oh God. Remove the distractions, I pray, Lord Father. And unite your people. Unite your people, oh God. That we, oh Lord, will be counted as an army of one. We declare these things. We release them over our city, oh God. Over our families. Over our workplaces. That the glory and the honor would be given unto you. In and through Jesus' name we pray. And God's people say, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I bless you, church, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'll see you all uh, Monday night, Tuesday night at prayer. God bless you. If you all need something, please reach out and connect. Amen? All right. Thank <laughs> you.